Well, I have another Magnavox ZV427MG9A, this time shipped in to me from Tennessee. Let's go ahead and power it up. I have it plugged into my Syncor PR57 AC Powerite, the isolated Variac. Power the unit up. You can see the clock is blinking on and off, along with both VCR and DVD indicators. So the first thing I'm gonna do Let's go ahead and pull the DVD mechanism out. Just take a visual inspection down below here where the power supply board resides. You might be able to see it under there just a little bit. And take a look at the capacitors and see what kind of physical shape they're in before we go any farther. All right, well there is the power supply. Take a look at that filter cap right there. The top is definitely bulged. That is the 4700 microfarad filter cap at 6.3 volts. And I'm going to say that is going to be the problem on this unit. Now, it might need some other service. It may need the real rotation detector cleaned right there under the prism. It may need to have the mode select switch serviced as well. Plus, you may need to check the DVD recorder capacitors and see what kind of shape they're in on top of all of that. So, let's go ahead and pull the board out, change that cap. I'll go ahead and ESR the rest of the caps and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, so to remove the power supply, just remove these four screws right here. To get to the fourth one, you have to unplug this ribbon cable just by lifting up on it. Now we can go ahead and pull the power supply completely out of the unit. Okay, got the blue ESR meter out. Gonna verify lead integrity. Zero, perfect. So we'll just start over here. I think these are uh, some 100s or 220s. First the pad, nothing, then the lead. 0.27, I'm good with that. 0.24, good with that. These are both 3300 microfarad caps. 0 0.01, 0 0.01. This one's a little 22 microfarad cap, so if I see like one ohm or less and I see 0.33, I'm perfectly happy with that. This one is a 1000 microfarad cap. I'm okay with that, 0.12. These are both 470s, 0.3. And 0.13, I'm okay with those. 0 0.14, 0 0.04, 1.4. Let's see what value that guy is. That's only a 10 microfarad cap. I'm perfectly happy with that. And then on to the snubber capacitor right here. A couple of ohms, I'm good. Yeah, 2.0, very small value capacitor. The main AC input filter cap of 0.25. And now the all important, this is the failure point right here. 0 0.89, 0 0.9 ohms. That is the problem. I'd like to see a half ohm or less. Let's go ahead and check a new one. All right, so I've got a brand new Nichicon. And like I said, I'd like to see probably a half ohm or even a quarter ohm or less. And I see 0.07 ohms on that one, 0 0.06. I'm perfectly happy with that. Let's go ahead and put it in. I'll resolder all the rest of the capacitors, put it back in the unit, and we'll give it a try. Okay, so I have it loosely assembled. The DVD mechanism is just sitting there. The power supply is just sitting there. I haven't bolted them down because I don't know if I'm gonna have to pull the mechanism out and do an optical rear rotation cleaning or whatnot, but the unit is staying on right now. So let's go ahead and pop a tape into it, put it in the VCR mode, and let's see what happens. Well, that was interesting. Well, it does play. Let's see if it's gonna play more than about 10 seconds. Well, so far so good. Let's try a rewind. Good. Let's try a fast forward. Take the tape out, see if it eats it. Pop the tape back in, try it one more time. I'm seeing a problem where it, it looks like it may not have enough back tension. That's just the slightest amount of back tension. I think I may have to increase the uh, back tension a little bit. Because the tension arm that you see right here is really far out. So I'm going to stop it and I'll take a look at the brakes. Let's 
see what it looks like down in there. Okay, so on this one, there's really no adjustment for the back tension, so I went ahead and just bent the other end of the back tension band very, very slightly. That looks much better. Definitely much more tension. You can see the tension arm right here is responding much nicer. Okay, so I thought I'd check some of these capacitors on the DVD recorder board. I've already done like a preliminary run through and most of them seem to check okay. Get about one ohm on that 3300, four ohms on that 47, a little bit high for me. Four ohms, a little bit high. 0.3 ohms, I like that. 0.7 ohms, just a little high. 0.3, that's good. 0.2, that's good. Almost an ohm, eh, that one's suspect. 0.28, that one's good. Now check out this one right here. 7.7 .7 ohms. I'd like to see probably two or three ohms at the absolute most on that guy. 1.5, it's only 100. 3.9, little high for 100. 0.4, that's what I like to see. 2.3 for a 47, not too terribly bad. 0.3 ohms, that's good. 0.47 ohms, I'm okay with that. 0.3, perfectly fine. 4 ohms, a little bit on the high side. 4 ohms, a little bit on the high side once again. And back to 4 ohms. So I do not like this one right here. That is 7.6 ohms. That is definitely too high in my book. So I think I'm going to go ahead and contact the customer and recommend that he does replace at least the capacitors that I've got marked with a red mark, preferably every capacitor on the board. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine capacitors that basically failed the test out of 20 capacitors, so nine out of 20. So just less than half of them, in my estimation, failed the ESR test. So I'll go ahead and contact the customer, see what he wants to do. Interestingly enough, this unit does play a DVD with no flaws whatsoever. I did not try to record a DVD. I would be suspect in the recording process. It does require much higher current, especially for the laser diode to write, to actually melt that substrate layer, to change the data from zeros to ones. I would be suspect that it may not successfully write a DVD correctly, but ultimately it's gonna be up to the customer. I'll give him my findings and let him make the final decision. Well, I gave the customer the option to replace either none, the nine that I deemed as defective, or all 20 capacitors. The customer decided to change all 20 capacitors. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up the camera, get a little bit of a different view. We'll use the twist off method. And as you can see, I'm not using surface mount replacements. I think the standard radial leaded capacitors are a much better choice. So I've got the leads all bent up as necessary. Let's go ahead and get these things twisted off the board. We'll clean the pads and get all the new capacitors installed and give this thing a final test and ship it back to the customer.
Okay, got the unit all back together. I'm gonna go ahead and go into the menu. We'll go into general settings. Let's go ahead and set the clock before we do anything else. It is currently April 15th, 2021. And it is exactly 2 a.m. right now. Now we'll go into recording, auto chapter. Let's go every five minutes. Auto finalize when the disc is full, on. Dubbing mode, make sure we're in VCR to DVD dubbing, and make recording compatible on. Next, I'm going to go ahead and pop in a blank DVD-R. We'll let it read the table of contents. I'll speed this up so you don't have to wait the whole time. And it knows that it is a minus R. I currently have a two-hour VHS tape in here, so I'm going to go ahead and select two hours. And then I'm going to press the dubbing button right here. Tape should start, and it should start copying. So we'll come back to this in a couple hours and make sure it successfully recorded the tape to the DVD. We may have to finalize the disc. We'll play the disc back. If everything passes, we'll ship it back to the customer. All right, well, the disc finished recording. So let's go ahead and go into the setup menu right now. Disc edit is still active, so I have not finalized the disc. Let's go ahead and finalize it. And I'll speed this up so you don't have to wait. It takes about five minutes. So I'll speed this up to just a few seconds. Okay, so there it is, the title. So let's go ahead and eject the disc. Close the drawer once again. Let it load the disc. And I'll go into the setup menu and see if the disc option is still available. It should be grayed out at this point once the disc is finalized. All right, there it is, read the table of contents, no problem. So let's go ahead and go into the menu. And disc edit is grayed out. That means the disc is absolutely finalized. Let's go ahead and hit play and just skip through a couple of chapters. And make sure it reads the disc okay. And that's it. It's up and running. The Magnavox ZV427MG9. This one, I believe, was sent in to me from Tennessee. Anyhow, that's it. Change 20 capacitors on the DVD recorder board. Change the main filter capacitor in the power supply because it was blinking on and off. The VCR absolutely is perfect. Didn't even have to clean the prism, the real rotation detectors, or the mode select switch. It works absolutely great. Anyhow, that's it. The end of the video. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below. I try to read all the comments and respond when I have time. While you're down there, hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really helps my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at NorCal715. You can email me, NorCal715videos at gmail.com. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everybody, once again, thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. Everyone have a great day, and once again, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.